Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Archie Reason Digital, where we create photorealistic assets together. Per viewer request, today I will explain some of the most used functions in Mari for me personally. In general, I try to keep things as simple as possible, so these functions might be a little underwhelming. But they are also so useful, I figure this video can still be helpful for someone that's new to Mari. I will do this demo on my crab. Actually, it's just the top shell part of the crab. It doesn't hold up if I turn it around. It was a quick two-day thing, including modeling. It is really fun to tackle different subjects on a small scale. It's like just when I started to get tired of it, it's finished. If you want me to tackle a specific subject just so you can see how I would solve the problem, please leave the subject down below. As long as the modeling is not going to take me forever to do, I will totally demo it for you. So, what are my most used functions? They are tire node, merge node, radio transmitter slash radio node, the super soft brush, and the stencil slash luminance function. The tire node is the first one to use when I start to build material. Like I explained before, starting with the procedural makes the process faster. If we can capture as much detail as we can with this one texture, we are making life easier for ourselves. Merge node is the most basic and crucial. It's the way to combine everything. You will have to use it extremely often in all your projects. The radio transmitter slash radio node is my new favorite from the Mari extension pack. In past projects, I showed you how I normally connect a radio transmitter node to all the masks so that we can use these masks as many times and wherever we want while keeping everything clean. Sometimes the mask node graph itself can look pretty complex. By using the transmitter node, uh, doesn't matter how complex it gets, it doesn't have to interfere with the main map. The next tool I use almost all the time is the super soft brush. I really like this brush because you don't see the brush strokes. It's easy for me to avoid anything looking too painterly in my mask. If I combine this with a stencil that's extracted from an actual picture, everything can look very natural. Here I'm using the super soft brush to clean up some seams and unwanted artifacts from the texture. As you can see, you don't see the edge of the brush and things can merge seamlessly. The last one is the stencil slash luminance function in Mari. This is by far my favorite function. I cannot imagine painting any complex maps without this. For anyone who doesn't know yet, when you use a stencil in Mari, you can choose uh, either luminance function or inverted luminance function, which just means that when you choose luminance, Mari only takes in consideration the white parts of the mask. Inverted luminance means you are using the black part of the mask. The best thing about that is the parts that's not being used is considered transparent, which means there's no information that's being painted. Another thing is that you can choose what color you want to paint with the part that you choose. Like if I choose luminance and I choose the color to be white, that means the luminance part is going to be painted as a white mask. But you can also choose black which means you're using the white part of the mask, but you're putting on black information onto your mask. I hope you can see how powerful and flexible this function is. In other softwares, I find that if I want to only paint the white part of the mask and not affect what's underneath it, I will have to set the layer setting to screen. And if I need the dark information, I have to set the layer to multiply, which means if I want to keep what I already done before, I always have to stack layer on top of each other to keep getting the black and white information. With this function, I just paint everything on one layer. That's it. Those are the functions that I really love to use. In the future, if I find other things that are super useful that I forgot, I will definitely mention again. Okay, now I will show you a super duper quick process video of the crab, just in case anybody is curious. Here is the model I did in ZBrush. I might went a little overboard with the sculpting, but it was pretty fun for me. So the next part is we have to analyze the reference. Here I'm circling out all the colors that I will need and all the interesting characteristics that I need to capture. The next part is gathering texture. Once you see a few of my videos, you will see that the process is pretty much the same every time, but every asset will have its own challenge based on what it looks like. Now we set up 
the base material and we build masks for each material. Again, I'm using substance to bake small masks to speed up our work. For this guy, I have one that's uh, mo mostly based on curvature and I made another one is mostly based on uh, ambient occlusion. I will import all the masks and start using all the stencil I collected to paint. Because we have analyzed each element in this asset, now mostly we're just following the plan and putting each element on top. Remember to always have your reference next to the scene so you can constantly compare. Once I finished building all the elements and their masks, the next step is to break up the base material. With this step, you can actually experiment a little bit more and trying out different color texture. Here, I'm actually trying out cow leather to break up the color, which can seem a bit odd, but I think it works here. The last thing is just to decide when to stop. Things Real Life has infinite subtle details and uh, we can keep working on this forever, even though it's just a crap show. At the end, you just have to judge for yourself uh, if this is good enough for what you have to use it for. I will also show you a little bit of the render I was doing for this one. For this thing, all I used is diffuse and displacement map. For spec, spec color, and uh, roughness, I only have a flat value on everything. And I think the end result is uh, pretty close to the reference. It just goes to show you that sometimes it doesn't have to be complex to look what it's supposed to. Here is the final crab shell with hand-drawn legs. I hope you enjoyed this one and leave a comment down below if you have any questions. For the next video, I think I'm going to try to tackle for the realistic asset in Substance Painter and Designer. Please keep in mind that I never produced any final results out of Substance at work. It's a learning process for myself as well and I think it's going to be really fun. Please like and subscribe and join my Facebook group if you need any individual help. I will see you in the next one.